Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Fear Factor, the show where we rank your favourite horror movies and games on a fear scale to determine how effectively they scare us. I'm your host Luke and today we're going over the introduction to one of the most influential horror games ever to be created, Five Nights at Freddy's, developed by Scott Cawthon. I have many fond memories of this game and those that followed as it was one of my first introductions to horror games. I remember growing up with these games when they first came out, when I was at school and playing them during my lunch break with friends, as we all crowded around to see if we could survive the night. Also, the story of how this game became so popular is extremely inspirational as well. A small indie developer who was having no luck with his past games went on to create one of the largest horror games ever with simplistic game mechanics, which then spawned countless games after, and even its own movie. But just how scary is this simple point and click horror game from 2014? Team. Let's find out. In Five Nights at Freddy's, you play the role of an underpaid security guard called Mike Schmidt, whose job is to watch the security cameras in case the animatronics get a little bit quirky during the night. But you must be careful because you only have a limited amount of power to get you through the night, and not using this carefully could find you getting stuffed into one of the suits. One of the main aspects of this game is its jump scares. The game features six unique jump scares, two for Freddy and one for Bonnie, Chica, Foxy and Golden Freddy. Each jump scare varies in its scariness, with Foxy being one of the weaker ones, whilst Bonnie and Chica's, in my opinion, are the most terrifying due to the lighting and the animations of the scares themselves, which is what Freddy's lacks. Golden Freddy's jump scare sets itself apart from the others due to its spontaneity. His scream is also unique as it is much lower pitched and longer than the other animatronics, which can be heard while his empty eye sockets stare into your soul. <laughs> In some instances, this jump scare will cause your game to crash, leaving you with a sense of unease. There are some indications that a jump scare is about to happen, for example, Foxy running down the hallway, the breathing of Bonnie or Chica in your ear when they are in the office, being unable to close the door or turn on the light, Freddy laughing, and of course the notorious music box that plays before Freddy's jump scare when your power runs out, which varies in its length, causing the player to be uncertain if they may make it to 6am. The tension is a huge factor in this game, as you constantly check between the cameras and the doors for any movement towards you. It's up to you as a player to pay attention to the animatronics whereabouts so you can react accordingly. Check the cameras for too long and you may be greeted by an unwelcome guest. From night two onwards, you especially want to pay attention to Foxy's Pirate Cove as he slowly creeps out and if you see the sign it's me, be prepared for Foxy to run down the hallway towards your office. You will have to react quick enough to keep him out. As the nights progress, the tension drastically increases as the threat coming towards you becomes more apparent. The sound design is used masterfully in this game to immerse the player in an unsettling atmosphere. On the first night, you are introduced to the character of the phone guy, who puts you at ease as he gives you advice. But as the nights progress, strange things happen to him, eventually leading to his demise. These voice messages are a way to build up the dread that you may meet the same fate. The constant humming from the fan in the office, paired with the uncanny ambient sounds throughout the pizzeria, bring the place to life. Sound cues like the circus music that can be randomly heard in the distance, and the clashing of plates when Chica is in the kitchen, add to the feeling of not being alone. The animatronic's footsteps as they move from room to room indicates that they are getting closer and closer, which builds the tension. This can be used to your advantage to keep track of their whereabouts. Unpredictable and distorted noises that are accompanied by pop-ups of Freddy's face with the words, it's me, puts you even more on edge as Hawthorne capitalizes on the fear of unfamiliarity. Freddy's uncanny laugh is an indicator for when he is close, but the fact that this is the only indicator we get, whereas Bonnie and Chica appear at the door, therefore instills a greater sense of dread, as audio cues are easier to miss than visual ones. It also creates a contrast as compared to the other characters who offer a wealth of information and time to react. Freddy, whilst offering some information, offers less and therefore presents himself as a more immediate threat. In the situation where you run out of power, you hear the sound of the power shutting down, followed by Freddy's music box playing the Torridor March. When you hear this music, even after taking your headphones off, it's already too late. Unless you're extremely lucky and you hear the chimes of victory and cheers that you made it to 6am, only to get immediately thrown into the next night. It it does make you think about what the security guard does after he clocks out, and why would he even want to turn up the next day? 
Maybe he deserves it for being this stupid. The visuals and environment in Five Nights at Freddy's play an important role in creating a chilling setting. One of the main contributors to this is how the game restricts players to a dimly lit office, with the only thing to support them are two doors and a flickering light bulb. This confinement creates a sense of claustrophobia as you have nowhere else to go whilst the animatronics come for you. The office itself is filled with eerie details such as the children's drawings that plaster the wall and the cobwebs hanging from the doors and desks. The security cameras that look over the low light surroundings all have a static effect which makes the animatronics harder to spot when they are not in plain sight. Whilst monitoring these cameras, there are a few instances where the animatronics look directly into the camera, showing that they are aware of your presence and almost as if they are taunting you. This visual of Bonnie staring at the camera with a cold expression and dark eyes is so unsettling and something straight out of a nightmare. So, on our fifth scale of 10, where does Five Nights at Freddy's rank? For a first time playthrough, this game is a test to see if your reactions and multitasking skills are good enough to keep you alive. Five Nights at Freddy's constantly keeps you on your feet and limited power forces you to use it efficiently or else you'll die. Whilst the visuals and sound design help create a nightmarish situation, the jump scares are what gets you in the end. Although, after a while playing, they do get a bit repetitive and the effect wears off. For a first time playthrough, I'm giving Five Nights at Freddy's an 8 on our fear scale. Let us know if you agree with our ranking in the comments below. If not, where would you rank this game on the fear scale? Thanks for watching this episode of Fear Factor. Be sure to tune in next time as we review and critique more horror movies and games to determine just how scared they make us. And remember... Ooh.